What's up guys, welcome back to Goshen Games. I am Goshen and today we are talking about the newest episode of Dragon Ball Super. I almost said Dragon Ball Z. So used to saying Dragon Ball Z. Uh, Dragon Ball Super episode 92. Uh, there is a lot going on in this episode guys. It, it's it almost feels like too much for one episode for them to explore everything. Um, but you know, let, let's go into it. Uh, so we have, let, let's break it down piece by piece because they go, they, they jump through the different universes. So we have um, the universe with Topo and, and Jiren and all of them. Um, they're, they're basically discussing what's going to happen in that hour that they're going to be away. Um, who's going to be able to, to take over? Um, who's going to be able to, to basically um, guard the galaxy? Um, so, you know, uh, Topo says, okay, well, we have a lot of trainees and they're very eager. So we can rely on the trainees to take, to take the mantle and keep the universe safe while we are gone. Um, so, you know, he, he goes and he talks to General and the General basically said, tells him, okay, I will, I will join because, um, there, there might be more to the general than we realize because, uh, the general, he doesn't seem like a very powerful ally, but he might be useful to them in the same sense that Master Roshi is useful to Universe 7, um, because you, Master Roshi has a lot of knowledge and, and, um, and he's trained all of them. So perhaps the general may have a similar, uh, similar, usefulness to him where he's he's trained he might have trained them he might have uh, you know he might have a lot of insight on on battle strategies uh so it you know and you can tell that because of the type of respect the type of level of respect that topo has for the general um so that that's what it seems like uh plus you know he carries the name it, it's not like everybody else where he has he has a name you have topo jiran and then um the beerus looking guy or whatever um, he has a title. His name is the general. His name is probably the general for a reason, guys. Um, so, you know, what is he going to bring to the table when the tournament starts? I'm not entirely sure yet, but I'm kind of excited to see because, you know, the, the people can't fly. They're not allowed to fly. So, you you get a ring out or knockout. That's how you um, that's how you lose in the tournament. So, uh, so we have the, a lot of the low tier characters that are actually able to have some sort of usefulness um, because there's restrictions in this tournament um, so with that let you know let's go over to um, to another universe and I forgot what universe this is um, but apparently the god of destruction in that universe is a robot looking thing um, so they they went they focused on that universe which is kind of kind of different because it looks like in that universe there's a lot of um, uh, what, what's a good word for it animatronics um, there's a lot of robotics in that world it looks like that population has some sort of um, AI robotics that have possibly taken over the universe um, so this god of destruction and all of them in this universe um, they go and they talk to this this one this one guy who they ask him to join the universe uh, the universe of power tournament and they ask him if there's any more um, any more fighters that they could they could use. And it looks like this this guy he creates these robot things or people or whatever you want to call them, these AIs, right? Um, and so he made one specifically for the tournament, and which is kind of a weird gimmick. You know, he's like. I made this 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 one fighter who is made specifically for tournaments. He has claws that'll dig into the tournament so he doesn't fall out, and he his arms extend so he can pull himself back up. Um, and they say, okay, well, what happens if he falls out? And then they're like, well, he has these big suction things, right? That'll suck him back in or whatever, you know. That way he can never get a ring out. Um, so the way I see it, unless unless like. Unless specifically if these things are made like Magetta, where it's super hard to like do any damage to them, then I can understand that. But I, I don't I don't see how this could be useful because it's just 
it's a that's a weird universe. It's a really weird universe. Like I said, the universe, the god of destruction in that universe is a robot. So it's it's a weird universe. Um, so uh, now let's go to universe six. Let's go to universe six. Universe six, which if you haven't saw the seen the picture down below yet, which you know if you're watching this video, you should you should have seen it by now. The picture down below is of Khalifa. Um, they. <laughs> See now, here's the thing about about this episode. Okay, um, this is the only kind of issue I have with it. Um, Vegeta had taught Kaba how to go Super Saiyan, and he told him use your anger and your rage to fuel your power, um, which he did, and he became Super Saiyan because of that. Now, uh, Kaba is trying to replicate this with. Um, with Khalifa and trying to piss her off, but it's not working because it seems like she's, she has anger issues to begin with, so that's why it's not working. And um, and it, it's a very weird way of doing things, be and you know, because we honestly we've never really seen a full blooded female Saiyan before. Um, I mean, we have, we have, you watch the Bardock movie, whatever we have, uh, but in the main series, right? In the main series, we haven't really gotten to know. A full-blooded female saying so um, so it, it kind of like it, it's kind of fun to watch it because she's so aggressive Khalifa and it's Khalifa is so aggressive that it, it she she's a very big contrast to Kaba who Kaba is very mellow and kind of, he's very you know level-headed um, if, if I was going to compare the two to Universe 7 in this case, because I know that there's, there's comparisons between Kaba and Vegeta because Kaba did a Gallic Gun. But as far as, like, character-wise goes, I could see Khalifa being a little bit more like Vegeta in that case. Um, and Kaba being a little bit more like Gohan. Uh, so, you know, it, it's kind of it's kind of a, a nice comparison between the two. Um, so anyways, Kaba, te you know, he's trying to teach her and he, t he explains to her that there's this feeling in your back, apparently, where your energy gathers, okay? This feeling in your back where the, your energy gathers. You focus on that, and you build it up from there to turn Super Saiyan. So, Khalifa, she focuses all her energy in her back, and she goes, she manages to go Super Saiyan, and then apparently she perfects it, like, right then and there. Like, she does it two times in a row, and she's perfect. She, she knows how to do it now. She, not a problem. So, from there... She calls over Kale, um, who is, I thought, if, at first I thought Kale was her sister. Apparently, Kale is um, an apprentice, and she's teaching Kale. Uh, looks like she's teaching Kale how to fight and all that stuff. So, now Kale, if you've seen the intro and you've been paying attention to spoilers and all that stuff, Kale is the Broly, the female Broly Super Saiyan. Um, she's hesitant to want to learn how to go Super Saiyan. Uh, they don't say why, and my guess is that because she already knows how. Um, but, it, you know, it's a full-on rage similar to Broly. Um, so, you know, that that's a nice focus that we have in, in part of the episode because of the whole, um, you know, that, that was the whole question is like, how is Kaba going to be able to teach everybody else how to do it? Apparently, it's not that hard. Apparently, it's not that hard. Um, if I had hair, maybe I can focus on my back and, you know, gather my energy there and, you know, go Super Saiyan, maybe my... My facial hair goes super gets spiky and all that stuff right there. Boom. boom. Um, <laughs> anyways, so now let's go back to Universe 7. Um, universe 7. Okay, Universe 7 is now at an interesting place because Boo fell asleep and there's no way to wake him up. Um, on top of that, everybody who Goku lied to finds out that he lied. And now they're all pissed. Um, and Krillin puts it nicely. Uh... But then he kind of screws it up at the same time. Um, and, and Elder Kai points it out that he screws it up. But Krillin tells Goku, he's like, look, you know, we're not upset that you lied to us about the Zenny, but we're upset that you lied to us about what would happen. Um, you know, we're your friends. We've been through so much together. We're surprised that you wouldn't tell us. Um, and then, you know, then he goes to say that, uh, you know, if he would have told them, then they wouldn't have joined, um, because he would have been too scared. And uh, <laughs> and then that's when Elder Kai will. He's like, oh well, you know, this this could have been really emotional if he, you know, would have kept it going with it, but he didn't. He screwed it up. And then so Beerus is like, okay, well, you know, 
I'm gonna kill you and completely erase you if you don't join. So if you join and we lose, everybody gets erased. So if you don't join, I'm gonna kill you anyways. So he's like, okay, I'm gonna join. And then, you know, and then he's like, well, 18's not gonna join because she's not, you know, 18's all about money. Um, so then Bulma's like, okay, well, you know what? I, I will, I'll go ahead and I'll pay everybody who joins. Um, so then that's there. Even Vegeta was kind of upset that Goku lied to him, which is actually, that's actually pretty cool. Uh, to see that kind of development in Vegeta's character. Um, so then the last thing is, you know, uh, the Supreme Kai, um, or Shin, or whatever you want to call him, um, he, he mentions, he's like, okay, well, you know, we only have ten fight, we only have nine fighters, we need ten fighters. If Zeno-sama says we need ten fighters, we need ten fighters. So then Beerus gets all pissed off, and he's like, well, you know, if you guys hadn't killed all of Frieza's army, then we could have had 10 fighters. Um, but now we're stuck to this small little planet looking for fighters. And then Goku has a bright idea and he's like, you know what, Beerus, you're right. We should bring Frieza. And everyone's like, oh my god, Frieza, really, Frieza? And then the last, uh, the last thing in the episode is a focus on Frieza's face, you know, that we saw at the beginning of Resurrection F. So, what's to come in the next episode is Goku recruiting Frieza. That's the next episode, Goku recruiting Frieza, and apparently there's some weird demands that Frieza's having uh, regarding the uh, the recruitment. What would those demands be? I don't know. My speculation would be Frieza would want to come back. He, want, he would want to be resurrected. Um, that's number one. Number two, I could almost see Frieza saying, I'll come back if you die. If Goku's killed, I will come back. I can almost see that. Um, that would be an interesting twist. Would they do something like that? Probably not, but that would actually be a really, really interesting twist on it. Um, or Frieza could say, I want to come back and I want to build my army again, and I don't want to see your face ever again afterwards. Um, that could definitely be in another another case right there. But most likely scenario is either he wants to fight Goku after the tournament is done, or he wants Goku dead after the tournament is done. So I, I could see some Frieza doing something like that. Um, so anyways, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think of the episode. Let me know what you guys think of Frieza coming back. Let me know what you think Frieza's demands are. Comment down below. Let's have a conversation, guys. Um, there is so much in this episode. I'm sure there's other things that I missed. Uh, there's just too much, too much to go through. So anyways, guys, do me a favor. Hit that sub button if you guys are new. Uh, hit the like button. Go ahead and comment. Let's have a conversation down below. And I will catch you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching, and you guys have a great day.